YouTubers, what's up? It's your boy Hamlet. And we're gonna be bringing you some content today. Right now we're working on my brother's 87 Peterbilt. This is a 379, all right? And as you guys probably know, with your older trucks, you're gonna have a lot more maintenance than your newer trucks, okay? But, um, for those of you, you know, who are trying to just work on it yourself and trying to, you know, work on things as you go, we're gonna do a little cheat, uh, a little hint, knowledge, some stuff for you guys to learn, a hint bomb, all right? What we're working on is electrical, okay? Now, this fuse box that's on here, what tends to happen is, you know, if you're watching this video and you got stuff that's going on with your truck, your, your gauges go out from time to time, the lights go out, you know, the voltmeter goes out, so one of these gauges go out and you're trying to figure out what's going on it could just be a fuse it could just be a fuse to be honest um so look at you know try to find your fuse box typically it's going to be you know on your older peats and kenworths they're going to be sticking right up in here and you you'll find your stuff a lot of times too uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a fuse box box cover you'll find um what all the stuff has it'll, it'll tell you the ratings of what everything needs to be 20 amps 50 amps whatnot now unfortunately this is a factory uh fuse box panel cover but this is more than likely not the original fuse box all right so with that being said none of this stuff that's on here is going to be matching and if you're in that situation what you're going to just have to do is literally start pulling some of the fuses and figuring out what is killing um, when you pull when you pull that fuse out what what goes out what goes out right so you start pulling things out you'll notice okay or you lose your 12 volt which is your accessory stuff that you plug in for your phone charger you know, might lose your radio button, CB lose your radio, dash lights all of that cab lights, cab lights trailer lights trailer lights headlights you know, you know start marking things down come with a piece of note paper uh, a notepad and start writing things down all right this fuse at this location whatever yeah. it is it's not working this, this is what it kills you know that way you can start writing things out and figure out what's what you know so you can start there because that's the best place to start before you start chasing wires because chasing wires it, it, it's time consuming very time consuming and if you're not doing it yourself it's expensive yeah a lot of downtime yep absolutely so start there uh but before you start tracing wires you know because you want to first pretty much find the source okay yeah. and the source is at the fuse box 100 percent of the time make sure you're getting power there once you know you're getting power there you check out where you're getting your connectors your connectors and see if, if it's even reaching the end of the plug if it's not that's when you start that's when you look at wires yeah right. and uh just um just a hint for you guys if you guys have somebody to help you out um do this so it could be your son or it could be just a friend a neighbor whatever you buy a six pack to help you out um it'll be good if somebody helped you out because sometimes you gotta when be you're in two different locations. when you're taking out the fuse you first you know you gotta you take the fuse out and you're not really sure what you just messed up Yep. And then you got to look for it. So some of these things are here in the cab and you can notice them yourself. But as far as lights, headlights, cab lights, things that, you know, you wouldn't notice unless, um, you know, you were outside, then that's how you find out. And then also um, you, you have two types of fuses. You have one where power is always getting to it. And then you have the switch. uh Switch power fuses. Switch power, like the relays. And so, like your key, that. your key would have to be on, you know, in the, the on key position. Key has to be on the on position to trigger this to come on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so right now we'll just show you a quick thing to like just figure out. Okay, hey, let's pull this out and we can figure out. Okay, this is what that one does or, or whatnot. Don't be afraid if your engine just shuts off, um, which more than likely it's not going to probably happen. But if it does just put put that fuse back in and restart it you know okay hey this is controlling my engine you know engine power yeah so pretty simple do not take them all out at once don't take them all out at once <laughs> that'll be really you just you just screw yourself okay and also if fuses pop they pop for a reason try to figure out why they pop whether you have a short 
whether you have um, vi vibrations coming, stuff coming loose, always a possibility. And never, never, I repeat, never try to up the amps on a fuse because what you're doing is pretty much sending more amps or more current through to that, um, more juice to those appliances or devices which they're not going to be rated to handle that amount of amperage and you can blow blow up your truck start a fire up, start a fire i mean it's electrical people yeah. come on so you know if it says 20 amps right if that's what your fuse box is calling for that thing that's what you're doing now if you want to go crazy and you want to add you know a bunch of chicken lights and you you know you need to up it from there that's completely custom so that's completely different all right but when we're talking about the factory circuits that's what we're meaning when you say you know keep it at 20 amps if it's 20 amps don't start you know it only works if i put a 25 amp well it, it it's doing that for a reason, a, reason. Have a short somewhere and just because you're sending more juice what winds up happening is you get resistance in these wires because there's corrosion so the wire used to be this thick but then it becomes like a finger you know it, it becomes that much thinner so by putting in a, a thicker fuse you're sending more amps and you're kind of cutting the resistance but eventually you're just going to start a fire because this is going to get more brittle because there's more juice going through it and it's not designed for that so pretty much that's you know in a nutshell all right also you have your circuit breakers circuit breakers do go bad from time to time and those are the ones that are going to be you know your stop and tail light signals circuit breakers are good because they don't go bad like fuses so sometimes a circuit breaker will go on for a split second and it will pop and you kind of hear it. it's a very faint like pop it'll be like more of a click like and you know that the circuit breaker is clicking over and turning it off turning the circuit off because you have a short somewhere and it's telling you hey by the way i'll still send juice but oh it's not working i'm gonna turn it off i'm gonna try again i'm gonna turn it on nope I don't like it. I'm gonna turn it off. All right. So that's it's like, it's like when you have your microwave and your heat hair. Your your wife has a hair heater on, and you guys are trying to use too much. You know. And exactly. Yep. So you it's have, just gonna shut it off, but not shut it fully off, turn off the power. But not fully turn off the power. Exactly. So um, that's the good thing about the circuit breakers. So when the you clips, have clips, huh? You got clips too. Yeah. And we we won't go about that. You know. So you have your fuses. You have your circuit breakers. Understand the difference between them. And they, circuit breakers do have their own amperage rating as well, so make sure you're getting the right ones. All right, um, besides that, that um, we'll show you guys, we'll pull something out and we'll show you like what that one does. So let's pull out the the flashing lights because that's what the one we did. So you can hold that there, right? Um, key is on right now. How, where's my, uh, how much um, air I got? You have, uh, you're good. All right. Because if it goes down, I could, I could do the low air light warning. All right. You know the, lo the low air light warning? Yeah. Okay. All right, so right now we're looking up on the dash, okay? Okay, ready? Yep. Boop. Boop. Hmm? Boop what? Turn it on and turn it off. Oh, turn the truck on? No, lift the light. Oh, the hazards? Which one did you want me to do? Hazards. Oh, you want me to do the hazard box? Yeah. All right, so you can see the hazards lights are working, right? You see they're, they're working right there. And he just pulled the fuse out and they're not working. Okay, put it in. Oh, you see it's working. So just like that, put it in, take it out. All right, so. Put it in. Yeah, tight. <laughs> All right, so there you go. They're working. So just simple ways like that, you're gonna uh, be able to tell uh, what circuit it does what, and you can start relabeling. Still working. Your your stuff. Okay. Yep. So hold this. No, no, just entry. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that tech tip uh, for this week. And as, as always, get busy living and get busy dying. It's your boy. Hey, my brother. <laughs>